Okay, we have uh, Lars up uh, next. He's going to talk about Top OSM. All right, it works. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Top OSM, um, which is, well, I think anyway, an example of um, why OpenStreetMap is great in that this is the kind of project you can't really do with if the data isn't open. So, um, anyway, um, my name is Lars Alsen. I've been, um, I've been active with OpenStreetMap since, um, I think I did my first upload in February of 2009, so a couple of years. Um, it was actually thanks to some mapping parties that Russ Nelson, I don't know, some, some people here probably know Russ. Um, he had some mapping parties in the Boston area and kind of pulled me in. So he deserves a little bit of credit for that. Um, and um, so what is Top OSM? Um, uh, a picture says more than a thousand words, so this is Top OSM. It's kind of what the uh, what the name implies. It's a topographic map. It's it's a slippy map, just like the main mapnik layer or 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 anything else. Um, and it has all the features you would sort of expect of a topographic map. It has some shading. It has contour lines, and you know detailed hydrography things like that. So um, here's another example. This is actually I took this example from the wiki. Uh, show some hiking trails and things. This is east of east of Seattle in Washington State. Um, and you can see the contour lines. You can see some of the um, some of the points of interest for hikers in this case. And uh, and you know, and here's another example. This is the um, this is the Donner Pass, right northeast of Sacramento, California. Um, and you can see you can see how the new interstate goes over the pass, the old way, the the a couple of railroad tracks, and so on. So, you know, this is kind of what I wanted to do with the project. I I wanted to create a um, a topographical map uh, that I'm I'm the kind of person that can sit down and you know look at maps for hours at a time some people think I'm crazy but given the audience here I'm not sure <laughs> I can probably be excused um, but but also I was a little bit sort of dissatisfied with what was out there um, there was Google Maps they had their terrain view which is nice in a way it had a good good relief um, Good hill shading, so on. It, it was kind of lacking some features. It didn't show things like railroads. It didn't have much in terms of um, hydrographic features, and and so on. And you know, it's and and again, it's it's Google, so you don't have much control over the data. You can't put stuff on the map, not really anyway. And and so on. So I thought, and I thought, you know, being part of OpenStreetMap at this point, um, I had been when I started this project, I've been. I've been uploading things to OpenStreetMap for a few months. I thought, well, maybe I can do something. And this would kind of be a good use of, of the data that's available, I thought. Um, and part of the reason, too, was that the state of Massachusetts, I'm from, from the Boston area, so, um, and the state of Massachusetts, MassGIS, the state's GIS agency, they had some good data. They had uh, a statewide um, hill shading uh, in you know just uh, just geotiff format I think but something I could use anyway they had contour lines pre-generated and so on so I figured it shouldn't be too hard to kind of combine all these things into into a map and this is kind of what I had in mind and and in fact one of my inspirations has been you know printed topo maps this is the um, this is the National Geographic series, which is a nice map, especially for outdoors things, hiking and, and so on. So this is kind of, this, this type of thing has been 
an inspiration for what I what I was trying to do. So um, yes, I said I wanted to create a good looking map that's but still something that was useful um, with a lot of detail. It's just just a personal preference, but you know I like I like a detailed map. I'm used to orienteering maps and other nice printed topo maps and so on. So so that was a goal. Um, obviously, some emphasis on recreational features, trails, you know, shelters, water sources, whatever it might be. Um, and I definitely, in this project, I've definitely prioritized quality over speed. Um, and you'll you'll notice that um, by speed, I mean both speed of downloading. It's kind of heavier than most maps in the browser, being a sleeping map. Um, but also um, in terms of rendering um, how the map is made. So, um, yeah, with those goals, I, I, these are the data sources I've been using for the project. Um, needless to say, most of the map features come from OpenStreetMap. Um, and since I started with the state of Massachusetts, um, that seemed like sort of a manageable chunk. Um, and we already had this nice data from MassGIS, the contour lines, the hill shading, and, and so on. Um, so I started there. Um, but then once that was done, that, that took me a few months. I don't remember exactly, to be honest, when I, when I published the first version of, of Top OSM, but uh, it was a few months after I started the project. Uh, and the next sort of logical step seemed to be to to do a US wide map, same style, same thing. Uh, it's just that then I had to find new data sources. Uh, fortunately, USGS has the great national uh, elevation data set, which I've been using for for elevation data in, in, uh, in the US wide map and for contour lines and all those things. Um, and when it comes to hydrographic features, lakes, rivers, things like that, uh, they also have the National Hydrographic data set, the NHD. Uh, and this is something that's obviously already in OpenStreetMap. There are good tags, good things that, that you can use to, to tag water features, wetlands, rivers, lakes, and so on. Um, the only problem was that when I started the project, there weren't really a whole lot of those in the database. Uh, and that, that makes sense, because it's not easy to go out and sort of trace a lake. Um, so um, I looked into other options, and as I said, they have the National Hydrographic data set, which is very detailed um, and actually very good in my opinion. It has a few little issues and it's a little uneven sometimes, but basically very suitable for this kind of thing. And I know that now there's been a, an effort to start sort of importing the NHD into the OpenStreetMap database, and that's actually pretty far along as, I, as far as I know, but it's, um, it's uh, I don't think it's still quite complete, um, so I'm still using NHD for, for the, those kinds of features. Um, so um, let's take a look at how the map is actually rendered. As I said before, it's a, it's a normal slippy map, um, you know, like the normal mapnik layers or the Osma render. Um, so um, um, it's rendered in a way in a similar fashion to the Matnik layer, but it's, it's a lot more steps. It's honestly a little bit involved. I can probably simplify it a little bit too. Um, but if anybody wants to try it, try to render their own top OSM style map, it's, it's not trivial at the moment. So I start with importing the, the um, the OpenStreetMap planet file into a PostGIS database, as usual. Um, and I have to do a few little 
tweaks to it, I would say. Um, I export, um, I extract the root, the root numbers, um, because as as somebody previously <coughs> mentioned, the um, the ref tags, which sort of contain the root numbers, um, they're not entirely standardized. It's a little bit. Um, yeah, some people use slightly different styles. There's also uh, another reason why I do this, and and it has to do with shields. You'll you'll see that in a later slide. Uh, so I do some pre-processing there on the database level. Um, then there is also um, OSM to PGSQL, which you use to import the data into a database. It doesn't it doesn't actually let you import coastlines. Those are kind of a special case in, in OpenStreetMap. So I had to kind of do a little hack around that so I get coastlines into the database too. Um, so once I had the planet import, the next step is kind of to pre-process the, um, the hill shading data and generate color maps. Both of these come from NED. Um, so I have a ton of data and basically split up into, I think, one degree by one degree chunks. And uh, I generate hill shading. There, is, um, there are some tools, uh, a guy named, what's his name? Uh, Matt Perry, I think. He's got a site, Perigeo, with a few simple tools that uh, let you generate uh, hill shading and and a color by altitude map, which is what I mean by this color map thing. Um, so, so I generate those layers, um, and then the final step, um, I generate contour lines from, from NED as well. There's a tool in, in, um, in GDAL that generates contour lines, GDAL contour. And that all goes into uh, PostGIS database too, so I can, you know, query it quickly. Um, and then it's rendering time. Um, and this is where it gets complicated because the normal mapnik layer obviously renders one tile for one tile. I render ni nine mapnik tiles for per each final tile, plus the hill shading and the contour, uh, the color map, and all of that, and then sort of do some extra stuff to, to put it all together. This, is, this illustration is, uh, it's also from the wiki. It's not actually quite up to date. Whoa. This is the, uh, the first version I did of, of um, Top OSM. Uh, but it kind of gives you an idea what the layers might be and what I'm doing with them. It's actually a little more complicated than this too. But some things, and there, there are good reasons why I, do, um, uh, why I do all these layers. It's not just, I'm not just a fan of overkill. It's it's um, um, you'll I, in in some other slides I'll I'll show some some reasons uh, why I might need this. Uh, so those layers are all combined into three actual layers that I display with uh, with open layers, um, and I use image magic to do that that final sort of merging of all these. Things and it's not just sort of overlaying the layers. Um, there, I do different things with them. Some of them, um, some of them kind of um, tweak the 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 color of the of an underlying layer. Some of them, um, some of them cut. Some of them are used as masks to cut other layers and so on. It's it's a whole big process. And this is this is again from the wiki. And this is again the previous version of it. It's, it's even more steps now, but this kind of shows the steps I'm, I'm going through with, with image magic to combine all these layers in various ways. This is all on the wiki. I'll, I'll, I'll show the URL uh, at the end of the presentation. But um, So I end up with three layers. Uh, again, this is, this is the image I showed before. This is from, what does it say, Grand Junction out in Colorado, I think. Um, so the the base layer with the color relief um, and um, yeah the the 
the base layer, the color relief that, as I call it, the um, um, that's sort of the base um, here. Then I add uh, contour lines in a separate layer so I can turn it off. You know, open layer support, transparent layers that you can sort of turn on and off. And the final layer, roads, uh, lakes, whatever it might be. So that means I can, I can do things like this. I can turn the contour lines off if I want a less cluttered map maybe. Or I can do this, I can turn off all the map features and just show sort of the terrain. Uh, or even remove the base layer to just show sort of a non-shaded map with contour lines. Um, that also makes it a little heavy on, on the browser and takes more bandwidth, but it's sort of, as I said, I've, I've tried to, to put quality over speed in this, in this case. So, so, so it's a, it's a trade-off. Um, here's another example of, uh, of quality over speed and something that actually makes the rendering a little bit more complicated. Um, I don't know if halos is a good word for it, but it's, I've seen it used otherwise. And um, as you know, on most online maps, uh, typically when you have a, a text label like this, you render, you know, an outline to make it readable. If you have a black label like in the street name, um, you just render a white outline, so you don't need to worry about what's behind it. Um, the, on many printed maps, on the other hand, I've, um, it's typical that you kind of, instead of just rendering an outline, which I personally think is a little ugly and distracting, um, you just sort of cut out the, um, any sort of high contrast features. Um, like this example shows, you can see in the street name here, I don't know, well you can see the, uh, in the enlargement at least, uh, the, um, um, the road outline here kind of ends where the street name begins. And you can see the same thing up at the, where it says Blue Hills Reservation. It's, uh, it kind of cuts the contour lines away. So um, this is pretty common, I think, on, on many printed maps. And I kind of like this feature. But unfortunately, um, as I said, I'm using Mapnik to render this and Mapnik doesn't really have any support for for this kind of thing. So, um, so what I do instead, and the, the secret to this is is sort of to to render all of these things in different layers. Um, in this example, the street names, uh, the labels themselves are on one layer. Um, the the road outlines, the the black part, is on a different layer. And finally, the road fills the the yellow and the white in this case is on a third layer, and of course the contour lines is on a fourth layer too. So, um, and then image magic does some magic to kind of create a mask um, that kind of expands around the um, the. Um, the labels a little bit and kind of cuts that away from the road outline. So, um, so it's it's one of those examples of something that kind of complicates things, but uh, in my opinion, is just worth it. Um, and of course, all of these things make it a lot more involved, a lot slower to render. Uh, I would say it's probably at least an order of magnitude slower to render than the main Mapnik layer, probably two orders of magnitude at least. So, so rendering a US wide map is not only a, a problem when it comes to the, the data, the sizes of the data sets and, and, and the scale of it in general, it's also a matter of how long, just how long it takes to render. Uh, Ian's actually been very helpful providing me with some, some um, some computer power and and to to render this uh, for the US wide map. Um, 
here's just another example of the halo. So you can see it's sort of in the trail names. It cuts out the the trail, the dash trails itself, and the the other labels. Um, I created a basic set of symbols. I probably wouldn't have had to because it turns out there's a lot of good set of sets of symbols with compatible licenses out there. At least there are now. Um, but this is just basic symbols that you'd find on typical maps like this. Um, I wanted real looking highway shields. Uh, you can see they have both uh, US highways and interstates and uh, this is also one of the reasons I did some of that pre-processing um, when I import the, the planet file. Because as you probably, some of you know at least, if you've been mapping with OpenStreetMap, you probably, you've seen the ref tags on highways. And typically for an interstate, for example, it won't say 5, it will say I-5 for interstate 5. Um, so that's one of the things I do. I try to kind of do some string matching and so on on, on the ref tags to take that away to get just the root number. And then render the, the corresponding shield instead. And I know this has been something that's sort of on the suggested many times at least for the main mapnik layer too. It's just it's easier when you do it on on the US only scale because then you can just go by by highway type to to figure out which shield to use basically. Um, and there are still there is still work to be done here. It's not perfect. Um, if you look at top OSM, there are still roads with missing shields. There, yeah, there are some issues there. Um, and in general, top OSM is a it, it's work in progress. It's by no means finished. Um, it's and it's just a hobby project. This is not what I do for a living. So. So you know, there's a, there's only so much time uh, to to work on it, but uh, but it's probably at least in a useful state as it is. Um, so right now, um, as far as the coverage goes, I started as I said with Massachusetts because the data was easy to to get to and it was kind of already pre-processed. Um, and then I went on. Right now, we have full US coverage. If you go to toposm.com, this is uh, one of the options. Um, in fact, after I did Massachusetts, um, and I started working on the US-wide version of it, I, I rendered a few separate states, sort of, because rendering takes so long. I started with um, Colorado. Not because of any specific reason other than it has some in interesting topography. So, so it made sense. And then I rendered the West Coast, um, California, Oregon, Washington. And finally I could, I just sort of set up a rendering to do the whole, the whole US. Um, right now it's down to about zoom level 13, 14, something like that. I'm st it's still rendering. In fact, I checked it about no, I checked it about an hour ago, and it's still working a little bit out in California right now. Uh, and you know, it takes to do a statewide rendering, even just down to zoom level 13, like like we have now. It still takes a few months, so it's not a fast process. And so there is room for improvement. I'm not sure how far I'm, I'll be able to take it or it's going to go, but uh, that's one of the things we could do. And it's, in fact, it is on this list. It has better performance down there. Uh, because obviously, if it takes many months to render something, it's never going to be quite up to date. And I know that's one of the requests that many, many users of OpenStreetMap want. They want fast feedback. And especially on something like this, because I imagine it could be useful for for outdoors use and so on. So, you know, people go out, map trails, 
put them in OpenStreetMap, and then it, then they expect it to be on top OSM immediately. I've I've, I've received several emails <laughs> from people saying, you know, why is my why why is this trail not on on the map? And unfortunately, I just have to tell them this: it it takes a long time to render. Uh, and also, you know, it would be nice to have um, have more zoom levels than 13, because that's really where it starts looks to look interesting. Um, and there are some areas that have that have more depth. Um, if you go to Colorado, it's down to 15, I believe, right now. Um, but it definitely would be nice. Um, so that's that's one area I'll I'll work on. Um, and as I said too, it's kind of heavy on the browser, uh, and it takes a lot of bandwidth because two of these layers uh, are PNG layers, the the contour lines and the map features, both PNG layers, transparent PNG layers, and the JPEG, uh, the color relief layer. Um, so all of that makes it sort of slower than the typical mapnik layer or, or something else that's comparable. So. So one of the things I've considered doing is just kind of merging all of these into one layer, uh, fairly heavily JPEG compressed, and offer that as sort of an option when you don't need all those fancy, you know, turn layers on and off and so on. Um, also, I've, I've, I've had some feedback on the project asking whether I could, um, you know, offer this on, on mobile devices like GPS units and so on, which make a lot of sense to me. My, my GPS doesn't support um, raster data very well, so um, so I don't know when this will happen, but it's certainly an idea that's worth uh, considering because I think that's where it could really be useful. Um, and there are always improvements that can be done to the styles themselves. Obviously this is a custom style, it's not it's not really based on the existing Mapnik styles, uh, and so there are just bugs in it, issues, things that don't show up correctly, things that aren't supported yet. Just recently I put in uh, ski lifts, for example, somebody wanted it, which makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but, you know, there's always improvements that can be done there. Uh, and PDF output is another one that I've had requests for. Um, people understandably want to print these maps, you know, and take them out, I imagine. Um, and unfortunately, that's not entirely trivial to do the way it's rendered, as you saw. And, and what I described was still a, kind of a simplified process of the rendering, so there are lots of issues with it. I'm, I'm not saying that it can't be done, I'm just saying it will take some work, so, but it's, it's on the list, uh, so it might happen at some point. And finally, lots of people say, hey, this is cool, but it's not available where I live. Yeah, that, uh, that is obviously an issue. Um, one of the reasons now, of course, is that the data I'm using is only available for the US. Uh, so probably what, what I would do to, to do a sort of a worldwide top OSM rendering would be to use SRTM, you know, the, um, what is it, the Space Shuttle Radio Topography Mission Data or something like that. Um, anyway, that's, that's global uh, topographic data that NASA provides. Uh, it's not as high resolution as the NHD, or the, the NED. But um, but I actually did did a little sort of proof of concept code pulling that in, and it certainly works. So um, that might happen at some point in the future. And then there's always the rendering problem. If I was going to do a worldwide topos and rendering, if the U.S. takes a few months, <laughs> um, well, but you know as. As I said, better performance can do a lot of things too, so, so we'll see. But um, yeah, these are, these are at least some of the ideas for the project in the future. Uh, we'll see what happens. So um, right now, uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure some of you have seen it already, but it's at toposm.com. 
Right now there's a few options because those areas um, that I specifically did, um, like Massachusetts, Colorado, and so on, are still options because because um, they have more levels in them. I'm, I'm going to try to merge these as soon as I can. Um, there's also some information on the OSM wiki. Uh, a little outdated in a few places, but useful, I think. The source, if anybody wants to look at it, or, or, or if you want to help out with some of these ideas, or you have ideas of your own, um, the source is in, in the OpenStreetMap subversion um, right there under applications rendering, so you can take a look at it if you want to. It's not necessarily pretty, but it works. Um, and yeah, there's my email address if anybody wants to to contact me. All right. Any questions? Yeah. So first I just want to say I've been following this from a distance since Massachusetts and yeah. I love them. They're beautiful. Thank you for your efforts. It's a, a great example of, as you say, why having the data be freely available is important. Yeah. I do have it, it on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you tiles, have a web browser in your phone, there's nothing stopping you from using it. It's a little it. slower than the other tiles, but not much slower. But they're just the JPEGs for the Massachusetts one, anyway. Yeah, this first bullet point might might fix that and that would that's a relatively easy thing to do too so that might happen I do have a question of maybe other people who have tile servers can also chime in can I ask your tile server what levels of zoom I can ask for what extent X and Y I can ask for uh, basically it's right now it's just served as images right. uh, that you know that open layers so it, doesn't, and it doesn't really know it's a tile server, it's just there happened to be a bunch of pictures. Right. It's, that's basically what it is. It's not a full-blown WMS or anything like that. Uh, I mean, you can... If the, the, the main sort of top OSM page will obviously... Yeah, but I have uh, a web browser. I have my own tile viewer. Yeah. It has 20 different tile servers, and I want to say, well, how about you? Are you ever going to show me anything over in Australia, or should I just not try? Right. <laughs> Short answer, no. No, like, even what Zoom levels are available, like, like on GeoCommons, we can figure it by, oh, this one has 1 through 20, this one has 1 through 18. But you can't, In a configuration file. But you can't ask it, what do you have? Nobody does that. No. Uh, not that no. I'm aware of. Um, okay. Not seeing any of the. Okay. <laughs> Just one more question yeah. that comes up. You switch to that layer and nothing shows up. Yeah. yeah. So I have started manually configuring. Okay, I know that this one has these zoom levels and you'll want to move over to this part of the country to see anything. Unfortunately, that's probably what you'll have to do. That, yeah. That's fine. I yeah. so yeah. hope that. Thank you. All right.